yeah i want to welcome everybody good evening uh we're about to start this training and uh, we have already had uh, our uh, facilitators available so we have the person of mr joshua Oni, and then we have prince adewale Adi dg uh we'll be starting with uh, mr joshua so mr joshua over to you sir yes good evening okay good evening once again everyone i will be talking about um few points on Naila Bridging. My name is Oni Joshua and a graduate from UI from University of Ibadan. Okay, so I will be talking about and I'm a Naila farmer, yes. So I'll be talking about few points on uh, sorry for the cut. So I'll be talking about few points on Noila chicken. First the introduction, the appearance, the feeding requirement, stroke growth rate, the productivity, that is the egg and the meat, the arching and the housing. Sorry. The arching, the housing, then the veterinary care, lastly. So, I hope you enjoy the session as we go on. Thank you. Okay, so the Amo, the Amo chicken, the Amo breed, was developed um, by the Amo farms, the Amo zebra Atri, in Oyo, in Nigeria. Uh, they are based in Oyo State. So, the Noela chicken breed is one of the breeds of poultry birds that has a very, very great prospect. As a very, very, yes, comparative, I mean, relative to other breeds to other poultry beds to other poultry beds yes and being able at least being able to meet up with the increasing demand of egg quality the, of the meat quality and the egg quality the meat quantity and the egg quantity that is being able to meet up with the demand and also with the cost of production and other few another interesting point as we go on you will hear more about it okay to buttress that point of being balanced Sorry, all other um, poultry breeds are balanced. But the reason why I say that is because the Noila breeds are very agile. They are always active, very active. They move about. They are not um, um, as gentle, as cold, as calm as the broilers and all that. So they are very active. So that's why you will enjoy the Noila more. If you like seeing poultry birds being active, yes, you will enjoy. And you can easily detect if one is having an ailment or not. Okay, the appearance. Of noilers, they come in various colors. There's the pure, well, there's a pure white color. I've seen the pure white color. I've seen the brown. I've seen the black, pure black, and I've seen the um, the mixed colors. That is dual colors, brown, black, or brown, or brown and white mixed colors, black and white. This is um, dotted black and white colors. So their appearance, and also they are they are stout. They are stout. Yes, the noiler breeds there. At a very, they are, they have a very good height and. And they are they are looking big. They look big when when standing and when moving. They are very stout and balanced. Okay. Concerning the feeding for noilers, noilers can feed on the on the various matches available. That is the growers match, the starters match. Sorry, the starters growers finishers. And they can feed on the various kind of um, feeds we have available. The top feed, Breedwell, Hendrix, Happy Chicken. Um, uh, Various, various types. We have chicken on any kind of feed. You can find the market. The noilers are good to go. And alternatively, interestingly, they can feed on kitchen waste. Kitchen waste, vegetable waste. That is a watermelon waste, um, um, orange peel. I just discovered that today. Um, the orange, the distant, the inner part of the orange, that fiber part of orange, you know, like waste. I just told them not to try to that you bring it. So I tested it with them and they, they, were, they were good. They, they ate everything. They ate their part. Then um, this, um, okay, watermelon, banana, potato, yam, green vegetable. That is the green one. In fact, um, if you have your noilers, if you if you have your noilers in a weir, there are little weeds growing around. They help you clear the weeds. That is it. They clear the weeds for you. So no weed can grow. Even the one that's trying to enter through their distant marsh net, they clear it off. So that is where they are good at. So they eat anything waste. Anything that can be dissolved, they just eat it. Anything vegetable or waste or the kitchen waste. They are very good at that. They convert everything for you. So they finish everything. Even the watermelon and the point at which you introduce those things, those kitchen waste, is uh, probably in the afternoon. The way I do mine is that um, after giving them the normal feed in the morning, then I give them um, vegetable stroke kitchen waste in the evening. So by that evening, by then they might have been, they must have been hungry. They can convert. They can, they can decide to test it. They can, they can give it a try. So that is it. So they give it a try, 
and once they go with it you can keep on bringing it in fact this um, beans peel you can give it to them anything just try it so far it's not poisonous and it's not too um, pepperish yes so far it's not poisonous and it's not too pepperish so party rice waste party rice i you know so in getting all this kind of waste you will need to collide and have a lot of good co collaborations with all these um, um canteens all these small canteens and um suya and all these um people that sell oranges um, i would say people that sell orange uh, purposely give them buy more so that they can give me the waste too all their vegetable waste they are anything vegetable lettuce watermelon carrot just bring it just cut it into small small pieces if it's too big just cut it into small small pieces they eat it off and even if it's not too big they, they just take it they are good to go with it so um that is that is that for nylon farm for the feeding of nylon farm for the egg productivity and the meat productivity of nylon beds nylon beds um can lay nylon beds begin to lay eggs at five min at five months though some start as early as four months and they can also lay for up to two years once they start yes they can also lay up to two years and in fact they can lay every day the eggs are big big in size the eggs are extremely uh, in fact they are bigger than that of those of the local chicken and their characteristics rich dark yellow yolks which which means the eggs are richer now i was doing a little i was doing a little research on the this you know, the effect of this waste product that others feed on i found out that one aside adding to the vaccine the vaccination the natural vaccination of the noila beds it makes the egg they produce more ld compared to just raw feed just feed uh, noilas feeding on plant feeding on the noilas um, i have they feed on green vegetables they feed on watermelon they feed on um they feed on pineapple waste they feed on anything fruit waste they are ready to consume so far it can digest so far they can break it down carrots they are even their head shell they feed on it the eggshell obviously will supply calcium back so for their egg production since they produce egg so they will surely need calcium for egg production so they feed on any kitchen waste that is that um, that doesn't have too much of pepper or anything they are ready to devour so that is so the egg production comes every day the egg they produce the egg every day and the egg will surely and obviously be more nutritious than the normal table egg we purchase in the market so and also the meat production the noilers produces meat that is sweeter that is sweeter and meatier than any other than the meat from any other breeds their meat production remains as high and as long as they are given a period of care and farewell that is for broilers now they have they have um, most broilers most cases broilers as broilers um, for as the maximum number of time after which you begin to get scared that anything could happen to your um, broiler um, bed at that point but for noilers no the currently the noilers i have they are going to about seven months now even eight months now and they are still laying so for the fact that they are still laying and they lay every day they lay every day so for the fact that they are still laying we are not done we are not ready yet to put an end to them most so that is all about the productivity meat and egg productivity they can they can st they start laying from five months and they can lay every day while the meat productivity is meatier and it is sweeter than any than the meat from any other breeds and they also have a good weight at maturity okay as for the hatching for noilers the noiler beds can they don't hatch the hex themselves okay so what some people do is that they have local um, beds alongside the noiler beds so the local beds um, this is practically what i've seen the local bed when they lay egg and um, they go out to scout for food during the days you know they lay um, they go out to scout for food they immediately uh, at that point go take the egg the noiler's egg put it among the eggs that the this thing that uh, the local beds are sitting on that they are trying to that they are trying to incubate yes that they are trying to incubate so they just mix it there and the, the this thing the local egg comes back can can recognize the eggs and sit just sit on it again that's like deceiving it's like you're deceiving the local and just to incubate it for you so that is the way that actually that actually is done or you can take it to the arteries around we have a lot of arteries in the bank a lot so you can take it to the arteries around for hatching and the hatching is um, um cheap 
cheap, so to say. Yes, it's cheap. Now, for the housing for Nyla beds, they can live in semi-intensive. Um, they can live in semi free range systems or free range systems yes um the flooring should just be um, on cemented ground yeah the flooring should be on, on cemented ground then they need a fence around for protection they need a fence around at least for their young stage they need protection at their young stage so a, there should be a fence like a wire and also the material you'll be using for the reason why um, this thing, a wire goes will be preferable than using wood for nets is because they have a lot of feathers so to give them enough aeration to give for there to be enough aeration of ventilation cross ventilation you need wire instead of pure wooden pure wooden and that is why they're not even suitable i mean they are not um good to be kept in cages because they have a lot of feathers on them and don't forget that um, this um no uh, beds generally they don't have sweat glands they don't have sweat glands so for proper ventilation you need they need to be kept in a wire fence preferably a wire fence or you allow them roam free range allowing them free range roaming okay to buttress my point on housing you can take about 30 percent of your total space that is of a total fenced area for for like a shed for constructing the shed with corrugated iron sheets yes then at the basement of that shed you can for easy cleaning for easy sanitation you can have like a net on it you have a net so by the time you come early every day or in the morning to clean up you can just pull out the nets in the nets you can pull up the nets then sweep up the physics you um, sweep all the physics around then close the nets back that is that place the reason why you have physics around that side is because that is where they will stay for the nights when it is cold when it is cold yes and when there is sun that's where they will stay so when there's sun and when it is cold in the night, that's where they go to sleep or that's where they go to rest when it is sunny. And also for the hatching, I mean for egg laying, you can construct a very, very small um, box, a small wooden box. You can put inside the box um, um, dry grass or you can put, in my own case, yeah, I'll show you a picture of where I put um, just rug. In fact, that um, place where I, where I um, left for laying, it was, um, I did it ignorantly. I didn't pre I didn't plan it. I didn't prepare them to lay there. So I just noticed and I think there were three days, there were in the space of three days where I was busy. I couldn't clean up their listing, their housing, I couldn't clean up their cage. So they couldn't lay. They don't like to lay when the place is dirty. So they had to they looked for that place on top of their of one um, um abandoned cage. They just looked for that place. They saw one place where I just put rug, I just put tire just to I just made that. I just put. I just dumped some stuff there. I put a rug, then put tire, then put um, this thing carton on it. I just dumped them there. Not that I planned it for the fowl. So, but they located it themselves, and it was fit for them to lay eggs. So I just checked around and I saw the eggs there. I, I think the first day, I mean the day I discovered they were laying there, just three beds. The day I discovered they were laying there, I found about ten eggs. That means they've been laying there. So I found about ten eggs there. So they like to lay in. The, secluded clean and warm environment so that is it for so when constructing your own cage you can put boxes depending on the number if you are going to be having like 20 nylon beds you can construct like four boxes yes four boxes or you can construct like five so at least they, they go in tons they are organized they go in tons uh, one comes out the other one goes in the other one comes out the next one goes in so that same space is worth about um, 10 10 beds can manage it so they just go in tons will come out next then come out next and all that so it's very very interesting so and also the reason why it needs to be an unsmented place is because they like to bath like um train up their wings and train up their legs in sand so they like to wallow in that um, sandy area so you, you will notice it like uh, after like six weeks that they've dug special places where they can just have their bait and all that so they like to bath and they like to bathe in sand so they like it Okay, the vaccination for Noila beds will be very low. The reason is because um, they, are, they have high resistance to disease, uh, just like the cockerel. Cockerel has a very high resistance to disease also. So the Noila beds have very high resistance. And also, the fact that you feed them with um, these vegetables and kitchen waste and um, um, these green vegetables, raw ones, they gives them more resistance. It gives their immunity yes, against diseases. And also, in dry season like we are now, they have more resistance because they listen the there's low humidity 
so the microorganisms and microbes won't be able to thrive well in this low humidity time now i mean now that there's low humidity but during the rainy season you might need to give them antibacterial occasionally or you give them if you notice as an ailment from their droppings i mean from the droppings you can easily detect the kind of ailment also so you can just um, give them and the mortality rate mortality rate as death rate is very very low for the past eight months now i've only had two death cases and that was because about three um and that was because um there was a general flow of virus amongst um, all my beds at that point at that point in time so although that was skeleton on my part so but those two those two for the past eight months now. i've only lost two for the past eight months now good evening uh everyone uh my name is prince adidi Giadewale, the national coordinator for uh gasufan uh broadly speaking knowing labels farming is of good venture first and foremost they are handy, nola bears are handy, and uh, they are high disease resistant. That is to say, they don't just fall sick easily. And again, Mr. Joshua has taken us through the characteristics of these birds. I just want to add that when it comes to ashing, noila bears don't normally sit on their eggs. So therefore, like he enumerated, you may you may have to bring in some of these local hen to assist. But the way we do it here is that we pack these eggs and take them to the ashery. And for the best result, if you feed your Noela bears with feed concentrates, then add um, the vegetables, the wumavel, you can, out of a crate, you can get up to 26, 27. And like you said also, these birds, they can start laying between four months and five months. And when it comes to housing, Nola birds thrive highly with free range, where you can just fence them, get your pen ready, or semi-free range. And uh, we, I would like us to consider about four or five lessons we have established about Nella Bear. First and foremost is the brooding. The Bella, the, the Nella Bear. What I'm trying to say is that the brawler bears ask six lessons that we can look into. One, the brooding. Two, the feed and feeding. Three, the vaccination of a team. Four, uh, the method of rearing. And the fifth one, uh, Nala best farming is a serious business for now. If we want to gloss over them, uh, Nala uh, best upon hatching requires warmth and uh, care for at least 24 hours for the first four weeks for them to thrive very well. And when it comes to feed and the feeding management, Brother bears can thrive with concentrate, just like all these tata uh, grower, as uh, Mr. Joshua has earlier enumerated. But then, 
when you give them such in the morning, you can allow them to be free before the midday to actually scavenge and uh, browse around the environment for for feeding. It will not deter their growth or harbor any harmful uh, effect on them. Then the vaccination. The vaccination regime for Noela Bess has to be adhered to strictly. It has to be done strictly, not because they can uh, be disease resistant and we, we will be careless with their vaccination. The vaccination has to be followed strictly. Method of uh, rearing them, just like our uh, our method of rearing uh, beds generally, the deep litter system, the battery cage, and then the, the semi-intensive uh, system. We can we can we can rear them in such a way. And uh, like I said earlier on, Nola bears are more meatier, and uh, the growth rate is on is very very fast. They are more meatier, and their meat is sweeter than the normal broiler meat and what have you. Nola bears, Nola bears too, are very friendly. They are very friendly, especially if you adopt the free range system nola bears are very very friendly and their air production like i told you in the first something their egg production some of them can pick it up by four months month four or five months and they can lay for at least two years before uh, they drop the the temple. They are highly dis, uh, disease resistant. And those are the things. Mr. Joshua has already trashed the characteristics very well. Because uh, when you are, you are talking about appearance, Nella bears come with various colors. You can ever think of glowing various colors. They have it. Yeah, they have it. And uh, uh, the housing, I have told you about the housing, free range, semi-free range. Those are the those are the key points as far as Nola Bridge is concerned. Thank you, sir, Mr. Joshua, for your introduction. You are highly welcome to you, sir.